Hi, my name is Sylvain and today I'm going to show you how to use the web console for a software library called LabPal. As you may know, the goal of LabPal is to help people set up experiments that can be run on a computer. It provides features to generate, collect, process and display experimental data in a user-friendly way. Our demo will use as its example a lab that has been set up to compare sorting algorithms. While this demo concentrates on the use of the web console, the code for this lab is available uh, on LabPal's GitHub repository and is made of just over 300 lines of custom code. We will suppose for now that our lab is complete and has been compiled as a standalone jar file. The first step is simply to launch the lab from the command line by calling this jar file. OK. Uh, the prompt instructs you to visit a specific URL, so you can open a browser window and type this URL in the browser's address bar. This will lead you to the home page of the lab. In our case, we set up this page with a text that gives a few details about what this lab is about so that someone who retrieves our lab file and runs it has an idea of what it does. That same person can also click on the Help button at the top of the page to get a bit more information about how the console works and how to run the experiments that the lab contains. The Status button at the top gives some global information about the lab itself. You can see here uh, the title and author uh, of this lab, some data about the environment in which it is running, such as the host name, and also a progress bar that shows how many experiments there are in the lab, how many have been queued for execution or have been successfully completed, etc. Since we've just started the lab, nothing has happened yet, so none of the 64 experiments the lab contains is done. Uh, speaking of experiments, clicking on the corresponding button at the top of the page brings you to the list of experiments. Uh, for each, you see its unique number, uh, as well as the input parameters that determine what this experiment does. In our case, our experiments are meant to compare sorting algorithms, so each of them sorts an array of a given size using a specific algorithm. These are the details you see in the list. For each experiment, you can also see a status icon uh, that tells you whether the experiment is queued, whether it's currently running, etc. Obviously, to collect data, we need to run the experiments. This is done by sending them to what we call a lab assistant. The assistant is, well, just that. You can see it as some lab buddy that helps you with running the experiments one by one. To do so, you simply check some of the experiments in the list and send them to the assistant. Uh, in our case, let's just check them all. Uh, to send them to the assistant, we simply click on the corresponding button all the way at the bottom of the page here, Add to Queue. LabPal then tells us that these experiments have been added to our assistant's queue, but we must also tell the assistant to start running them. To do so, we click on the Assistant button at the top of the page. We are shown uh, the list of experiments that are waiting to be executed. If we like, we can select some of them uh, and remove them from the queue or go back to the experiment list and add some more to the queue, etc. Once we're ready, we click on the button Start the Assistant at the top of the page and the assistant will take the experiments from its queue one by one and execute them. Now that there is some action going on, we can have a look at the rest of the console. The status panel should show some progression in its bar as more and more of the experiments are being completed. Now, in this particular case, we should expect to see a slow start because the first time an array ha of a given size has to be sorted, it must first be generated, so it may take a couple of seconds before we see something. However, if we repeatedly refresh the page, eventually we will see the number of completed uh, experiments increase, like this. The lab has been set up so that a few plots are generated from data extracted from the experiments. The Plots page shows us these plots. 
So in the same way as for the status panel, uh, if we refresh the page, we should see uh, the plots progressively fill with data. If we click on a plot, we can see it full size. And again, we can also refresh that image periodically to see the updates. Each plot is generated from a table. Oops, from a table. And the uh, tables button at the top brings us to the list of all such tables. Clicking on one of the tables shows us its contents. And you get the idea. Refreshing that page will update uh, the table with new data dynamically. So here the table is pretty filled already, but if we go back and refresh a couple of times, we should see that there are some elements that are being added to the contents of the table. We'll say more about tables uh, in a few minutes. For the moment, let's go back to the plots. You'll see that each plot comes with a few buttons. The GP button allows you to export the plot as a GNU plot input file. You can save this file, for example like this, or just open it in a text editor, and then manually run GNU plot on this file uh, to generate the image. Um, for example, from the command line. Uh, the plot file is standalone, as you can see, meaning that it comes with its own data, so you don't need to refer to an external file to draw it. The ASCII button uh, is a funny feature where you can display your plot in plain text, like this. Uh, this is a feature of the underlying GNU plot software used to create the graphs. This is probably useful only in one occasion, uh, if you are running LabPal from a text terminal. As a matter of fact, the web console is fully functional if you use a text-only browser such as Lynx. Uh, just for fun, Let's open the console in Lynx. So we just type Lynx with the URL of the lab. There. At the bottom of this page, you will see the same menus. And if you go to the plots uh, menu, the plots page, you will see the list of all the plots. So if you select the ASCII button for one of the plots here, you indeed see, uh, well, actually you get a picture of the corresponding plot. Okay, this is not Picasso, but at least you get an idea of what it looks like. Let's go back to a decent uh, interface. Okay, uh, the PDF button is obvious. It allows you to download the plot as a PDF file, so you can reuse it somewhere else, such as in a research paper. But I'll show you an even better way to include plots in another demo. Finally, the table button uh, leads you to the data table from which the plot is drawn, so you can have a look at the actual numbers that compose the image. The macros button shows the user-defined macros that have been associated with this lab. A macro is any custom Java code that computes something on your lab's data and to which you want to give a name. In this lab, uh, we've created one macro that retrieves a number of different sorting algorithms that are being compared, the size of the largest array used, and another macro that looks at the running time of all the experiments, finds the longest, and gets the name of the corresponding algorithm. So in our case, we see bubble sort here. At all times, you can go back to the experiment list and click on one of them to see its details. In, if the experiment has finished running, you can get information about when it started and stopped, and also have a look at all the input parameters and output data it has generated. Finally, you can also save the current status of your lab. Simply go to the status page and click on the save button. You will download a file that preserves all the information about each experiment, including their metadata, uh, their start and stop time, etc.
Should you uh, turn off the lab and restart it later, you can re-upload your file and restore the lab to the state it was when you saved it. So you don't even need to run all the experiments in one batch, you can run a few of them, save the lab, reload it at a later time, and start some more experiments. That's about it for the web interface. As you can see, writing your experiments using the LabPal library makes it easy for you to execute, process and display their results, but even more importantly, it makes it easy for somebody else to do the same thing. Just ask yourself the question, if you were running your experiments with good old common line scripts and temporary files, would you take the time to make them user-friendly like this? Well, let me guess, probably not. Thank you for listening. In the next part, I'll show you how to include data from the lab in a document and how to refer to specific data points inside your text. Bye-bye.